I'd like to uh, present Artnet 3 that we've entered um, uh, for the awards this year. Um, before talking about Artnet 3, a little bit of history about the concept of Artnet, where it came from um, and, and why we did it. Um, back in around about 2000, we were, um, DMX512 was obviously the standard protocol that everyone was using. We were just hitting the point where we had jobs going out that were using more than 512 channels. So we'd, we started to get to the point where the term universe had been coined, people needed multiple universes and they were starting building um, multi-cores to send multiple DMX cables and it was just all starting to get as inefficient as it had been back in the days of Sokopex 37 pin multi-cores. Um, we needed, as Artistic License as a relatively small company, um, desperately needed a way of solving that problem and there were there was no standardization for transferring data over Ethernet. Um, there were ways of doing that, Strand had Shownet etc but they were all proprietary at the time. Um, so we invented our own way of doing that, Artnet 1 as it's now called. Um, and that was basically a method of transferring multiple universes of DMX data um, over an Ethernet cable. Um, in the first instance, we conceived it as a digital multicore. It was just a way to get rid of multicores for the DMX. Um, and then we had a few companies, ADB was the first one, um, express interest in using it as well. Um, and we realised that there was actually a big hole in the marketplace. There needed to be a standard for doing this. Um, we were then and are now relatively small company. We weren't in a position to say, this is the right way, do it here, we'll sell it to you as technology. Um, so we made it public domain. Um, we just published it, there you go, if you want to use it, use it. Um, slightly to our surprise, um, a lot of companies said yes and ran with it. Um, so Artnet as a kind of standard was born. When we conceived it, as I said, only people were starting to talk about maybe needing two universes or four universes. Um, and we built in a limit in the first version of about 40 universes, which we didn't realistically think was ever going to be hit. Um, around about 2006, um, I ate my words, um, and we realised that we needed more. Artnet 2 was born, which took us up to a limit of 256 um, universes, uh, which again was quite clearly larger than we were ever going to need. Um, this year we did a job for the Disney Castle in Hong Kong, 253 universes. Um, and we suddenly realised with only two to spare, it was time to do something. Um, so basically Artnet 3 was born out of real need. Um, it's out there, it works, it's free. Um, we're supporting it with a whole bunch of free software, software development kits, DMX Workshop, our test software. Um, we just launched an iPhone app that allows you at the moment just to convert between the ridiculously large numbers of 16 million channels. Um, and that's about there. It's, that's what it does. Thank you. The innovation, the innovation is that it's big and it's free. No, nobody else has anything out there that is um, interoperable between manufacturers and can handle um, 16 million channels. It's backwards compatible, yeah. Um, the whole thing is backwards compatible. If you try and talk Artnet 3, to a product that was designed for two or one, it will work, except it'll, it will obviously hold to the limit of 256 universes. So it's completely backwards compatible, yeah. Um, and it's actually really easy for all the manufacturers, of which I think there's about, getting on for 200 now, that are supporting Artnet, it's really easy for them to go up to Artnet 3 um, because there was actually a field in the data that was unused and left um, for, for the future, um, so it's really easy for them to all do that as well. No, it's actually a really minor software tweak for them. Yeah.
absolutely. The innovation was actually two years ago when you bought, 2006 when you bought out Art 2. Well, I suppose you could argue the innovation was 2000 when I left the blank in the protocol. <laughs> No, because what, what happens is it uses the lowest 256. So when you were using, if you were using a big system, you would know that your ArtNet 3 equipment needs to be addressed from, you know, from zero to 255 for a console that can only speak ArtNet 2. Um, so it, it requires the user to, to apply a bit of logic, but it's, it, it's kind of a no-brainer.